Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Solarize Mass and Solarize Mass Plus webinar. Um, my name is Lisa Dobbs. I'm a project coordinator at the Mass CEC, and I'll be presenting for you today. Um, I know it's right around 2.30, and I know there were probably a few more people um, that I have registered, so I just want to be mindful of that and wait maybe just one or two minutes to see who else is going to join before we dive in. Uh, so I figured in the meantime, I could just check in with everyone and make sure that everyone can both see my screen and also hear me. Uh, so if you don't mind, maybe just typing into the questions box or the chat. Uh, just to let me know if uh, there's any issues with the sound. I want to make sure you've got a good experience with the webinar and that you can hear everything that I'm saying. Great, I just got a message that the sound works. That's excellent, thank you, uh, much appreciated. Um, and also just a note with that, with the questions, I'll, I'll address this in a few minutes, but definitely feel free as the presentation goes on to just uh, continually type in questions there. Um, I'll be tracking them and then um, I've reserved a lot of time at the end to be able to uh, answer anything that comes up uh, throughout the webinar and hopefully we'll get, get a lot of good questions and, and answers for everyone as we go through. So I think I'll wait maybe about two more minutes just to see if anybody else does join in. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and get started? Again, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out and attending today. Uh, just to let you know, this is being recorded, so for any of those that maybe weren't able to make it that you're familiar with, um, we'll be sharing this with everyone that attended, and we'll also post a link on the website as well, uh, just so that everybody can have access to it. So again, for those of you just joining in, uh, welcome to the webinar, and again, my name is Lisa Dobbs. I'm a project coordinator here at the Mass CEC, um, and I'm excited to tell you more about the SolarEyes and SolarEyes Mass Plus programs and a lot of the details on kind of how the program works and how to apply. So uh, just a quick overview of the goals, just like I mentioned, a quick high-level overview of the Mass CEC. Uh, wanna discuss the Solarize Mass and Solarize Mass Plus a sort of model to the Solarize Mass traditional model. Uh, high level campaign overview to give folks an expectation uh, if you're interested in applying of, of what potentially to expect throughout the course of a campaign uh, as well as a nice overview of the application process so we'll just give some information on uh, just quickly how to navigate the website and just open up some of the application documents. Uh, and you know, hopefully this will elicit a few questions because we'd love to be able to answer uh, any questions anyone might have about uh, anything that we're gonna discuss today or potentially even anything we didn't mention. Uh, and so like I said before, feel free to just continually type in questions. Uh, I've saved a lot of time at the end for questions and that's when we'll go through everything. 
So let's just keep going and dive right in here. So uh, the Mass CEC or the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, uh, we are a quasi-state agency created by an act of legislation. Uh, we gain our funding from the Renewable Energy Trust. That's that small surcharge on ratepayer utility bills. And our mission's listed right here on the top of this slide. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, we're tasked with growing the state's clean energy industry while helping to meet the, the Commonwealth's clean energy and climate goals. So we've got some icons here to the right that give a good demonstration of some of the ways that we do this. We have a few entities. We have a marine commerce terminal. Uh, we have a wind technology testing center. And we also have a, a several different divisions uh, to essentially help us in the adoption, connection, and innovation portions of helping to grow this industry. We have an innovation and industry support division uh, that includes a workforce development division. We have an investments division uh, for uh, you know, developing technologies and companies. And we also have a renewable energy generation division. Uh, that's the division that the Solarize Mass program is a part of. And we're focused on the adoption portion, as you see here on this slide, and really helping to increase renewable energy adoption by residences, businesses, and communities. Uh, we have a lot of different other programs, so if anyone's interested in finding out more, uh, there'll be contact information at the end, and I'll be happy to talk you through our programs and connect you into any other space that you might be interested in. So in terms of what Solarize Mass is, for those unfamiliar, Solarize Mass is a community-based and driven education, outreach, and group purchasing campaign. Uh, and it's aimed at essentially what we said in the slide before, increasing the adoption of small scale or residential solar. So this is done through a competitive installer selection as well as uh, various types of reduced pricing, whether it's a fixed price or a tiered price, uh, depends on the community and what they'd like to select. But essentially what Solarize Mass is doing is because it's community-based, it's using the grassroots effort essentially to drive down that cost stack. So when you take a look here at the cost stack, you've got a lot of various uh, things essentially that go into a solar installation. And when you've got that grassroots effort with the community members, both spreading the word, spreading the education around solar, uh, what happens is this cost stack, especially the sales and soft costs, really shrink down. And then when the installer sees those savings, they're actually able to essentially directly pass that on to the customer. So this is a model that really simplifies that process and reduces costs. And it's a model that's been really proven effective to increase adoption. So that's one way to look at uh, how Solarize Mass works. I'd like to just take another look at how Solarize Mass works in a different way um, and, and essentially clarify that Solarize, what the model does is it helps address market barriers. So, of course, you've got the barrier of upfront costs. People are always concerned about how much a solar system might cost. So when you have the essentially the, the group purchasing aspect of Solarize and the competitive pricing, that really helps alleviate that issue right there. So uh, an entire community gets to pool together their buying power and solicit an installer and say, hey, we're interested. What kind of cost can you give us? Um, and so it really does uh, solicit very competitive pricing. And we'll talk about that in a few slides as to what we're generally seeing over the years. Um, it also addresses complexity. Uh, you know, there's a lot of installers out there, a lot of calls, types of ownership. There's just so much out there. and because this is community-based, you've got a volunteer team that essentially is helping perform a competitive selection for a preferred installer. So they're doing a large upfront vetting process for your community, um, and that vetting process uh, basically vets uh, the installer's pricing, their equipment, their history in the program, or just in the market in general. Uh, that's where Matt CC comes in a little bit and offers uh, a technical consultant to help with that as well. Um, and what results is also very transparent pricing. So you've really got, uh, you know, sort of this reliable installer that your community members vetted for you. So it can really reduce that complexity and you can have uh, one, one person that you know you can really go to uh, to look into solar if you're interested. Uh, the final, uh, not all of the barriers, but one, one of the other main barriers is inertia. So just getting, uh, getting to it. Uh, you know, a lot of folks have been thinking about it for a long time, but maybe aren't sure if they're ready to get to it. And so when you've got a community-based campaign, you've got a lot of support with the community members to inspire action. You've got people that can host an open house and show you what solar looks like. 
uh, you've got a limited time offer. So these campaigns can only last for a certain period of time because your installer is really offering a special limited time pricing. So, so through this, through that neighbor to neighbor communication, you're really helping uh, you know, catalyze these decisions and that's really helpful for those in the community. So when I mentioned cost, uh, this is a cost analysis from rounds 2012 all the way through 2015. And essentially what we're doing here is comparing the average market price to the average solarized price. And what you're seeing is anywhere from an 18% to a 21% reduction. So hovering around 20% savings. And that's what people are seeing underneath the solarized program. Some are seeing a little bit more, some are seeing a little bit less depending on uh, you know, types of equipment. Uh, but on average, this is what we're seeing, and it's been very consistent over the years. And so that's a really exciting uh, metric to talk about when you think that everyone is really seeing cost savings uh, as a function of this program. I will note that this, this is only on analysis on purchase projects uh, as opposed to like a PPA uh, because they're very hard to compare. Uh, but I will say that most of the time, solarized programs are seeing purchase projects, so ownership anyway. Uh, so that's really the majority of projects anywhere. Anyway, so, so a really exciting uh, metric to look at there. So a little bit more of the history of SolarEyes, just to give people a sense of where we've been. This is a nice map of all of the uh, communities that have participated so far. We launched the program in 2011, as you can see some of these yellow communities. Uh, we've run all the way through 2016. We're also currently active now with five communities in 2017. And particularly those communities, actually four of the five are participating a second time in that PLUS program, which we're gonna talk about in the next slide. Uh, so overall, this is over 18% of Massachusetts communities. This represents over 3,200 contracts, uh, representing 21 megawatts worth of contract capacity. So that's very impactful. That's quite a bit of capacity. Um, in just that small scale solar range. And again, like I mentioned, 20% average savings. Another interesting thing to note on this slide here is just to take a look at the map and how essentially the grassroots portion of this really works. And you can see a little bit of a networking effect here where the word seems to be spreading from neighbor to neighbor, town to town, um, you know, about the education of SolarEyes, about the program, and, and how beneficial it is. And, uh, you know, there is actually a study that says that for every um, additional solar installation in a zip code, a family or I should say a, a household is more likely to adopt solar. So this method is really showing the effects of just people being able to see it, being more comfortable with it, um, and spreading the word that way. It's making a very big impact. Um, so in terms of what Solarize Mass Plus is, Solarize Mass Plus is taking the traditional Solarize model and aiming to pair solar PV, so solar electricity, with a complementary technology. Now this might be a technology specifically that is electric based, or it might be its own renewable type of technology. Uh, so the way I want to look at it for today is to give everyone an example of some of the folks that are participating in the pilot round, which we launched in 2017. And for 2017, we offered the idea of three different types that, um, or technology, I should say, that SolarEyes could be paired with. So Newburyport, for example, proposed solar PV plus air source heat pumps, and Lincoln Sudbury Wayland proposed PV plus solar hot water. And a really nice way to look at why these are complementary and make an impact and, and really sort of outlines the intention of the program is when we take a look at the mass household energy use, so that pie chart right there on the right, we can see that almost 60% of household energy use is due to space heating. Ticks, uh, it tacks up to 60 with that air conditioning, which is something that uh, is involved with air source heat pumps as well. Um, and then another 16% is due to water heating. And in general, in Massachusetts, uh, we have a very high level of carbon heavy energy, uh, energy access. So things like oil, propane, natural gas, those really encompass the majority of our our energy access and therefore our heating and our water heating are very carbon heavy. So this is a really great opportunity to first, you know, clean our electricity and then either clean our heat or clean our hot water and really further our carbon uh, footprint reduction. Um, so some other benefits of this combination here 
is it's an opportunity for some folks to maximize cost savings by doing both at the same time. Uh, although some may uh, have already adopted solar and are looking towards the other technologies. Again, to further reduce that carbon footprint. But what we also wanted to target as well is knowing where the incentives lived. And we have many incentives for air source heat pumps. We also have incentives for solar hot water. And there are also um, incentives uh, in Massachusetts as well for both of these technologies. And additionally, uh, at MassCEC, there is an additional uh, rebate for doing solar PV and solar hot water. Uh, so that's just a really nice thing to think about when you think of whether or not it's feasible for homeowners. Um, another nice thing to note about Solarize Mass Plus and what we saw in the last, uh, or I guess I should say the current round, is that the way we've designed it is so that folks can receive quotes for one or both technologies under the program. So especially if a community has participated before and maybe they have a lot of early adopters for solar PV, they have an opportunity to still participate in getting that group, that group buying power uh, for the additional technologies. Another thing that I did want to note about Solarize Mass Plus, uh, and we'll, we'll note this briefly when we take a look at the RFP itself, is that uh, we do want to encourage other ideas. So one of the other uh, ideas that we've offered is to pair solar PV plus electric vehicles. We also want to encourage folks to reach out to us if they have other ideas. So especially if you're thinking about Solarize Mass Plus, uh, reach out to us. I've got contact information at the end, but send us an email. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know if you have questions uh, because, you know, largely we have a pilot still going on. So in a sense, it's still a pilot. We're still developing it. So we really want to hear from folks and what they're hearing in their communities so that we can continue to make this uh, a really expansive model. So uh, feel free to reach out. Again, contact information at the end. So I want to just provide now a high level overview of what a typical campaign encompasses. I won't talk about specific timelines yet because once I open up that RFP, I'll show you uh, right there in, with some text about some of the timelines. But the general ideas of things that everyone wants to think about when thinking about taking on a campaign is some of the major milestones or steps. So right now, you're thinking about it, you're attending the webinar, so you're probably in the sort of information gathering or creating a team phase. That's a really important aspect of the Solarize program is creating that team. Ensuring you've got the proper uh, roles filled, proper support, um, and a really fully engaged team as, you know, it can be, you know, a very involved process. Uh, next phase after you've learned about the program is uh, putting together an application, which is some work, and then eventually getting selected. And I'm going to walk everyone through again some of those documents that you can expect to use to apply to the program. Uh, after application and selection, uh, we offer some training for everyone that's involved, so all the volunteer team. Uh, and we also will help facilitate an installer selection process as well. Um, and it will vary a little bit whether you're uh, Solarize Traditional or Solarize Plus. Uh, but I will walk through some of the high-level steps of that in just a few minutes as well. Next phase is some pre-launch planning. So after your installer is selected, there's still some legwork to do. So we we'll want to keep everyone in mind that there's there's always a, a few gaps in between every next step. And the pre-launch planning, uh, planning, I should say, sorry, um, phase is an opportunity for Massey, C, uh, the installer, and the community to really help finalize all the next steps in the launch, the plans, review, the marketing proposals initially uh, you know, submitted to Mass CEC, and get that all tied together. That culminates in your formal launch and your Meet the Installer events. And this is a great way to kick off a campaign. You put a lot of the legwork right into that. That's your, your big uh, hurrah there. Um, and then your sign-up period begins. Uh, after that, it's really largely a maintaining momentum phase during the sign-up period. Uh, that's also where Mass CEC will play a slightly different role, um, but I'll address those when we talk about roles. And then when your sign-up period ends, you get to ce celebrate and share results. So there's a lot of different things that go into it, so I wanted to give a nice high-level overview there of what to, the general milestones to expect. So now to break that through, or I should say out a little bit further, is uh, taking a look at sort of the, the multifaceted roles that the, the, the program partners are going to have throughout this program. So first, the Mass CEC and the 
DOER, or the Department of Energy Resources. Uh, we partner to launch this program. So we have launched the 2018 Solarize Mass Program. We're very excited about it. Um, and we essentially will launch and facilitate the entirety of this program. So we will do things like read the applications, select the communities, and then start the next steps, some of which had been mentioned earlier. And a few things that I did want to highlight with this um, 2018 program is these two that I've just uh, changed color here. I just wanted to note that in the 2018 program, as opposed to the prior two rounds, Mass CEC has, has welcomed some feedback from a lot of communities, and we've heard that uh, the installer RFP and selection process can really be a big lift for volunteers. And the contracting can also be challenging for the municipality. So we have elected to take that back on and facilitate that um, more from our end. So we will work with the community to draft, develop, and launch the RFP, which we will host. We will send out to all our networks. And then, although the community will do all of the review along with the technical consultant, um, Mass CEC at the end will help contract with the installer. So we will contract with the installer on behalf of the community. So I, that was just an important thing I wanted to note because I know that's been sometimes a concern for communities in the past. So I just wanted to give everyone that reassurance that we're going to take back on that role um, and really help uh, take that burden off the community. So you've got, you've got more time to focus on selecting your installer and your program launch and campaign. So what we'll also offer, again, like I mentioned, is we're going to train everyone at the beginning, especially uh, on the technologies and the program. We're offering a marketing grant and other materials, a few which I'll detail in the next slide. And we're going to help facilitate that meet the installer presentation as well. So that's a nice success. Um, we will change roles once the program is running. Uh, we will be more as, of a resource. So we will facilitate check-in calls, uh, help track metrics with the installer so everyone is aware of their progress and we can get that good data that I showed earlier. Um, we'll also just help with marketing materials and just any other type of assistance needed. So no matter what, we are always a resource during this program. So that's something to keep in mind that we're a constant support system there. So just to itemize some of the specifics of what we provide for the marketing, uh, we do provide a banner. Uh, we provide t-shirts, marketing template documents. We also just offer ongoing support in market document development, as well as other media relations, such as a press release. We also offer, um, you know, I think this is a big ticket item, is the marketing grant for up to $5,000. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the RFP, but to clarify, that is in uh, two uh, tranches, um, but each community, whether you are in a group or individually, is eligible for up to $5,000. And what's not listed here, what I mentioned before, is of course we also provide that technical consultant for installer selection process, as well as, of course, that ongoing support consistently through end-to-end through -end of the program. So the community, uh, I'm assuming, which is most of you folks here on the phone today, a uh, very strong role in running this campaign because, of course, it's largely volunteer and community-driven. So the community is going to collaborate with us as well. You're going to have a, a nice say in drafting the installer RFP to be put out. You'll help uh, sort of itemize some of the goals that the community might have and really personalize it to the community based on your preferences and interest. And specifically for the Solarize Mass Plus program, you will help design and engage that portion about which technology um, installer you are looking to solicit and any of the details surrounding that, whether you're looking for one or multiple. Um, so again, you are that main uh, driver of the program, so you are increasing awareness about Solarize Mass, creating buzz, educating community members, and continually recruiting volunteers. Um, you, like we mentioned with reducing those barriers, that's another goal of the, uh, you know, the community. Um, you will set expectations on the program goals and timelines, because like we mentioned, that timeline is very important to the program and also just be in communication with Mass CEC and the installer. So as you can see, that was kind of listed there on the right-hand side. You can see some of the breakouts of key roles that when a community is considering applying, things they need to uh, be sure that they are looking to fill. The main two roles that need to be filled is a community solar coach and a municipal representative. Uh, we've got nice lengthy descriptions in the RFP to help people understand 
what the roles of those two, um, two participants would be and the time commitment involved. So we want to make sure everyone reads that in detail so you can have a good sense of what is involved there. Those are the main two drivers of the program. And when you're considering creating your team as well, you know, before this application process is, I want to give you some ideas of additional roles to consider that we've seen in the past and that have been pretty effective. You have someone like a solar ambassador. Uh, that might be somebody who is really excited about solar, can't do it themselves, but really wants to spread the word. You also have folks that maybe do have solar and can host an open house and let people see their experience and, and get comfortable with it. Uh, we've seen in the past that something that's very successful is to actually have a specific media or web person. This might not be someone that's entirely too involved in the program other than just updating the website, uh, you know, creating a website, maybe navigating all the social media and emails, uh, but we found that that can be a big lift and having somebody tasked to that can be very helpful. We've seen communities engage youth volunteers, whether it's high school or college, and that's also been really effective on, on multiple levels, whether it's uh, for the youth development or for the uh, you know, extra assistance that the community can gain through that. There's also other types of roles like canvassers. And again, the RFP will list uh, a few more in there. And we're happy to discuss more with everyone, as well as direct you to previous marketing proposals that will show other ideas that communities have proposed and or used in the past. So the installer, we won't get too much into detail about the installer role here. Uh, we'll certainly dive into that a lot more uh, if you choose to apply. But basically, the installer, like we mentioned, is competitively selected. And in the end, they become the technical expert and sales engine for the community. So the person, or I should say the group that the community can really rely on to go for, for site visits, answering technical questions, um, as well as the, the community volunteers very early on um, you know, after the selection, learning from the installer about the sales and installation process so that message can be spread, uh, you know, throughout the community about expectations. They'll also work with the community a lot of times on marketing, might share marketing funds, um, and you'll also share your marketing proposal with them as a part of the installer RFP process in order for them to get a sense of what your community is interested in doing. And of course, they will offer uh, the community a leads list to help track leads and help move that process forward. We always just like to mention that the homeowner does have an important role, so always consider that. Uh, homeowners get to sign up for the site assessment and, and, utilizing, and utilize that networking effect and talk to friends and neighbors. So it is a, a nice full circle um, role here. So that's the very high level basics of solar and what it are solarized and what it entails. What I'd like to do now is get into the application process and then talk about the overall solarized timeline expectation. And I'll talk about that when I open up the RFP because that's re really a nice detail right in the RFP. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to navigate away here from my slideshow here and I'm going to pop over to the website. Now what I wanted to do here is just give everyone a sense um, of how to navigate the website just in case you're not familiar uh, because our, our website's very um, sort of multifaceted and you can get to things from a lot of different angles. So I think the, the first thing is just to show you how to get to Solarize most directly and that is just through www.solarizemass.com. It's already been typed in a few times so we'll just get that up there. Now what that does is that directs everyone right to our Solarize Mass website, okay? So now if you notice, it's right on the top, so it does show that that is quote unquote the residential page. And the reason why I wanted to note that is there's slightly different information on the residential page versus the government nonprofit page. And if you've found this um, webinar, you've more than likely noticed that. Uh, but I want to just help everyone understand the navigation flow there. And so the Solarize Mass Residential has uh, a few accordions just to give you some more information about who's eligible. It tells you that you can see the How Do I Apply tab for more details on the 2018 program. It talks about who's involved in the currently running program and how you can potentially get in contact. So a lot of this is for community members saying, oh, I'm interested. Is my community uh, participating? Uh, let me take a look and see if I can find some contact information. So that's all there, including also some details as to how to find results for prior programs. 
The next accordion has all the details on how to apply. And the reason, again, why I wanted to note this one is this is what's going to navigate us over to the government nonprofit Solarize page, which gives us all of the, the RFP information and application information. So again, it gives all the details and the timeline. And when you take a look here at this first, or I'm sorry, the second paragraph, you can see this link here to request for proposals. And you can see that what this does is this actually slides us right over to the basic Solarize, uh, Solarize Mass Government Nonprofit How Do I Apply page. And that is now what actually com uh, contains the community application documents. All right, so we'll open those up in just a minute. But I just wanted to show you one or two other ways to navigate to this just in case you maybe come to the website from a different method. So if I go to the Mass CEC homepage, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at the menu and note that we can go in directly by customer type, so either by residential or by government nonprofit. So first I'll just click on residential, show you that you get to all our different programs. And the reason why I also did want to show this is because when you're considering Solarize Mass Plus, for example, we're going to offer you a lot of resources here, such as clean heating and cooling, more EV, mass save, and just some other resources that are going to help you see, essentially, uh, what other technologies might be available, what kind of incentives there are. So we just want to make sure to note that so you could see. Now, you can go here directly to Solarize Mass, or you can click and learn a little bit more about solar, see all the other programs that we're running as well and get directly to the residential Solarize Mass or the apply, so the government nonprofit Solarize Mass. Okay, so I just want to quickly back out of that and show that it's the same navigation for government nonprofit. You go to solar electricity, and again, you have the opportunity to go to either the residential page to find out more about your community, or if not, work with your community to apply to Solarize Mass. Again, it's got the same accordion, so you can navigate it the same way. But now we'll go from here to right into the application documents. So uh, dive right into the meat of it here. So again, when I go to that how do I apply accordion, I'm going to find my application documents. So the first and most important one, of course, is the RFP itself. Hopefully everyone's had a chance to take a look at it. But if you haven't, make sure this is something that you do read all the way through. This document essentially contains all the information. So first thing I wanted to note is that there is a deadline for the 27, I'm sorry, the 2018 program, which is 531.18. Okay. Um, and that's a deadline to be considered for funding. And again, we have a total funding available up to 5,000 per community. So just wanted to note those items that there is a deadline. It's of course uh, a little further out in the future, but just something to keep in mind as you spread the word about the program. And the RFP itself, I won't spend too much time on it, but just want to give everyone a sense that it discusses the opportunity and what we're looking for, an overview of the program, much of what we discussed earlier. Gives an overview, again, of the roles. So if you don't quite remember everything I said in the webinar, you've got an opportunity to really see it in detail here and get a sense of what we may be doing, the community solar coach may be doing, municipal representative, and so on. As I scroll through this here, it just gives a nice overview of the solar coach and the volunteer team. Some of those um, items that I had listed earlier about um, core volunteer roles. Oops, sorry, I'm not scrolling here. Apologies. There we go. Um, more on the municipal representative role. More on the installer proposal review team. I did just want to note this because this is also um, a core item that you'll want to consider when you're considering applying is you want to make sure that you have folks that are ready to do both the installer RFP and selection process. And just, <clears throat> excuse me, just wanted to note uh, that there as well as there are some considerations for the installer proposal review team. So make sure to read up on that as well. Just to, again, a high-level overview of the program process is listed in the RFP. The next thing that we want to just take a look at is just show that there is an opportunity to read up a little bit more right in the RFP about some of the other opportunities for Solarize Mass Plus. So we give an overview of solar hot water and some links 
to give you some more information. Also about air source heat pumps, electric vehicles, and then a little bit more on the installer selection process, because again, like I've mentioned, that did change a little bit uh, from the previous round. So make sure you read in on that as well to know what that uh, entails. Now uh, I'm going to stop here on this portion and just take a look at the timeline, see if I get everything in there. There we go. Um, so again, we released this RFP a few weeks ago. Uh, again, this is a rolling solicitation, which means you apply when you're ready. Uh, applications will be accepted again until um, May of 2018. And just a quick uh, run through on the expectation of timeline. So a lot of times you're looking uh, at an end-to-end -end timeline with this program, uh, probably at minimum a year, uh, just in terms of both uh, launching, or I'm sorry, submitting a proposal, uh, you know, going through the selection process, going through a training process, the installer selection, eventually the launch, the customer sign-up period, which can be, uh, you know, anywhere from four to six months a lot of times, and then sort of the, the end wrap-up and installation period. So just a quick note, uh, you know, expect to see about anywhere, you know, upwards of about four weeks uh, of review and interview once, once you've applied. Um, and then potentially around six weeks is when you may expect a potential approval um, of your application. Within six weeks of that approval, uh, we would aim to launch that installer RFP. And also within that time frame, we would also host that volunteer training that I mentioned. Um, so again, these are just some timelines to, to keep in mind as you start to think about when you want to apply, uh, what the time of year is, and, and all those different considerations should come in mind. And so this is a really nice overview of how much time sort of uh, elapses between each step. So uh, a lot of times I would say that the installer selection process, you know, you've got the RFP is probably out for maybe three weeks. Uh, you probably have another week or two of review and interview. And then you probably got a contracting period, which again would be on the mass CPC. Uh, but just to give you a sense that, you know, in a lot of senses, you're probably looking at maybe about two months for that portion. Then of course, you've got an announcement, you've got that strategy development, uh, the installer presentations, and then your launch. And again, like I mentioned, that sign up period, uh, the expectation is usually around four to six months, sometimes shorter, sometimes longer, depending on what the community is interested in. Um, and then, of course, uh, you have your installation period. So I'm going to scroll down a little further now through here just to give you a nice sense that we also outline what it is to be eligible. So make sure you read through that as well. And if you do have any questions on eligibility, please let us know. We've got all the information here on how you would apply, so how you want to submit the proposal, how you would submit questions. Um, one item I wanted to note here is, um, you know, feel free to consider prior to submitting a proposal. Uh, submit an email of intent. Let us know you're thinking about applying. That really helps in the planning phase for us and helping make sure that we've got a really quick turnaround for you in terms of review and potential approval. So just that's something to keep in mind. Um, and we, we definitely uh, request that as well for Solarize Plus because, you know, people might have a lot of questions on that as well. So we give a nice overview as well of what you want to submit within your proposal. Also our selection criteria. An overview of the budget. So that was what I mentioned before. So the marketing grant, how much you're eligible for, and some notes on how it can be. We've got our contact information, which of course I will also share at the end on the final slide. Um, and then just some other information uh, about a general request for proposal conditions. Um, so I also wanted to highlight that within the RFP itself, there are two informational documents. There is an example Mass CEC community contract. And what that's designed to do is essentially to, for a community, uh, an interested community to share with their municipality to show the, essentially the letter of understanding that you would sign with us at the onset of selection. So this isn't something you have to fill out, but we want to make sure everyone reviews it. So we placed it right in the RFP document itself. 
So I won't go through the details of it. That's something uh, everyone, of course, will want to read on their own. But I just wanted to show, <clears throat> excuse me, the second document here, which is uh, the Example Community Solar Coach Duties and Commitments form. Similar to the contract, we just want to make sure that the solar coach reads through all their duties and commitments and is prepared to essentially commit to it. Uh, so please be sure to read that as well if you're interested in either looking for a solar coach or being a solar coach yourself, as it is a time commitment. Uh, again, this isn't something you need to sign as a part of the RFP, but rather it's just something that we want to make sure that everyone reads and that we'll also give upon selection as well for signature. So that's a nice quick overview of the RFP itself. Um, quickly, I will just open up the attachment A, which is essentially your application form. And the goal with this form, the reason why we only have one form, as opposed to in the past we may have had multiple, is to give everyone everything that they need to submit all in one place. So I'm just going to change the view on this a little bit so it's a little easier to read. At the beginning, what we offer is a checklist of everything that you need to provide. So we've got nice little check boxes for all the things that you either need to review or submit as additional uh, things to this form itself. Okay, so make sure you read through all that. And now the form itself also contains lots of information that you would want to include, but you'll see that as you, we scroll through. I also wanted to note that this information is available on the website, but we also offer direct links to reference materials. And why I wanted to mention this is communities find these very helpful when they are looking through uh, and essentially doing their application. Uh, a pilot overview, so over overview of what programs have seen in the past, a best practices timeline, that's a little bit of a deeper dive um, into that timeline that we had gone over before, and also previous community marketing proposals. So while I note that, I, I'm now remembering that I didn't note that earlier, so I just want to show everyone where that lives. Regardless of whether you are in the government nonprofit or the residential, when you go into the program background tab, you, you not only have all of the resources I mentioned earlier, plus more, you also have an opportunity to look at all of the previous marketing proposals. So this is a really great opportunity to get ideas, uh, get an idea from a community that might be similar to yours, or also um, that might be a community that you want to reach out to and speak with to find out more about their experience. So just a little note on that, that that is incredibly valuable and we very much encourage that as well. I won't scroll through too much on the application here, but just want to say that these are all the forms you have to fill out. You've got an acceptance form. You've also got a partnership form. So this is an opportunity to really show who might be involved with the program and get, get their signature on it. Helps just per perform sort of a, an, a, I should say, a starting point for, for the roadmap for your, your potential program. And the template itself is all fill in. So all we ask is that you just fill in every section and just follow the um, page limit guidelines. So as we just scroll through here, I just wanted to note that there's just a whole bunch of boxes and sections to fill out. And I just want to note that you can literally just go right in and start typing, okay? The boxes will expand as you go through, okay? So you don't have to worry about any adjustments there. And you can just use the form as is as long as, again, you just kind of follow those, those sort of page limit guidelines. So everything's fill in. You can see everything you need to fill in is all the way through here. So I think I'll leave it at that. I don't want to bore you with too much more detail on that. Um, but that's really uh, the, the essence of it, is you've just got that RFP and that application form. So really simplified process there. It's what we've been working on for a while. So now what I want to do is just go back to our slide deck here, open that back up. And now I just want to open it up for questions. Let me take a look and see what everyone has typed in so far here.
Okay, so so far I'm not seeing any questions. So I'll just um, you know hang out around here for another five or ten minutes just to see if anyone does have any additional questions. Want to make sure that uh, we of course get those answered for you. But what I will do here is while uh, we're hanging around and waiting is I just want to basically thank you for attending today. Hopefully you gained some information that you maybe had some questions on. Um, or maybe are interested in applying. So um, again, we've got a link here, www.solarizemass.com. That's the website. And solarize at masscec.com is the contact information. Feel free to reach out at any point if you are either have a question on the program or are interested in applying. We're, we're happy to help and very responsive. So I'll hang around here for another five or so minutes and see if anybody does have any additional questions. But again, like I said, we will send this recording out um, to ensure that everyone has access to it so they can get that nice high level overview of the Solarize and Solarize Mass Plus programs. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. 